Okay, so what I'm going to do is we're going to I'm going to show you guys how to make a, a histogram. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go into um, L1, and if I hit the Stat button and then choose Edit, I'll have L1. But if you notice. I have some data here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the top of the column where the header is and I'm simply going to select clear. Notice down here it kind of clears out. If I hit enter what that does is it clears out the values stored in L2. I'm going to do the same thing for L1. Now some people make a common mistake and that is they accidentally hit delete instead of clear. Do not hit delete. It will delete L1 from the entire uh, list and we don't want to do that. So now what I'm going to do is I have a list of uh, values. I'm going to plug those in. Uh, 22, 17, 18, 29, 22, 23, 24, 23, 17, 21, 25, uh, 20, 12, 19, 28, 24, 22, 21, 25, 26, 25, 16, 27, and lastly, 20. Now notice that I have 24 um, data points that I've entered in. And so now all of these are listed in L1. And so what I would like to do is if I wanted to plot them, um, I could go to plot one and let me show you how I would do that. So if I go to second plot and I choose enter, I could do um, choosing plot one and then choose on. And then once I have it turned on, I could choose a frequency of one. So let me turn this off for just a second and then turn it on. And I'm going to want to choose histogram in this next one. And that's how I get the frequency to pull up. <coughs> and so that little thing that looks like a histogram is what I want. And for now, we're going to leave the frequency as a frequency of 1. And then the other thing that I want to do is be sure to turn off any other graphs in the calculator that may be set up. So. I'm going to go back to y equals and I'm going to turn this off or just clear it out. All right. And so now that I've got that done, I'm going to hit zoom and I'm going to do zoom stat, which is number nine. I could simply just hit the number nine or scroll down using the cursor and then hit enter. And there is my histogram. Now, um, when I look at the histogram, Basically, it gives me various values. So if I hit trace, um, I get the midpoint of 12, and then the number of 12s is, um, is 1. So I've got a midpoint where the minimum, it's not midpoint, the minimum is 12, and the maximum is 12.8. So that's the class, is from 12 to 14.83 repeating. If I scroll up to the next one, I have a minimum value of 14.83 repeating to a maximum value of 17 uh, and two thirds. And I have a total number of um, data points that fit within that category of three. If I go to the next one, I have uh, a minimum value of 17.6 um, uh, and a maximum value of 20.5. And again, I have three values that are in uh, that class. Um, 20.5 to 23 and a third. Remember, we had a whole bunch of 22s in there, so there's eight values um, that we have. And then again, if I come down here uh, from 23 and a third to 26 and one sixth, uh, I have six values that fit in that class or range. And two in this range and one in this range. And so as we look at it, um, we see that um, we see a bunch of, um, it kind of almost looks like a normal distribution. So what I would like to do is after we've looked at the graph, let's go to um, window and I'm just going to click on window 
And so see how I have 12 in this? I'm just gonna change this to 30, okay? And then my X scale, I'm just gonna change that to two. So it seems a little more reasonable. And uh, now I'm gonna hit graph instead. And what we'll see now is, well, it looks a little different. Um, so you could see here if I hit trace, I've got one value here, and in this category, it's changed my categories completely, okay? And so what this has done is I've completely changed the class width. Um, I've done a class width of two. In other words, um, from 12 to 14, I have one value, but from 14 to 16, I have no values. And uh, from 16 to 18, I have three values that fall within that range, and so on and so forth. Now, the other thing that I could do is I could go through and change um, a different Y max setting that would cause the graph to zoom in and out a little bit, but I'm not going to bother with that right now. So the last thing that I would like to do is I would like to, um, let's suppose that this data has a frequency table. So consider, uh, consider, consider test scores, um, and I'm just going to enter them in. So this is one type of histogram, and so let's go back to LSTAT and let's enter in uh, some other uh, test scores. So what I want to do is now, uh, I don't necessarily want to clear this out. I don't have to, and so the next thing I want to do is consider the number of test scores um, in my class. So I give a class. And the lowest score somebody can get is a 60, and then uh, we'll, we'll count by 10. So 60 to 70, um, 70 to 80, 80 to 90, and 90 to 100. And so those, those are like the boundaries, okay? And then I'm going to list the frequency. In other words, what I'm going to list is how many people scored that. So two people scored um, a 60. Four people, whoops, four people scored 70s, or around a 70. Um, seven people scored 80. Five people scored 90s. And one person scored 100. Okay, so the first L2 is actually the test score, and then L3 is the frequency of what these people scored, okay? And the cutoffs for the groups are 60, 70, 80, 90, all right? And that's in L2. And then the frequencies are listed in L3. And so now um, what we want to do is we want to graph that and then change the frequency. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to second plot and I'm going to choose, I want to turn plot one off because that's where I graph my other distribution. Then what I'd like to do is go to second plot and let's turn on plot number two. Now for plot number two, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn it on, I'm gonna choose histogram again, and here what I'm going to do is I'm gonna choose my X list, I'm gonna choose L2. Now what I have to do is I have to hit second and then number two and that gives me L2. Now for my frequency, I can actually hit second L3. And so what that's gonna do is it's gonna take my L2 value and associate the frequency for that class or, or cutoff at L3. Now if I hit zoom stat, which is option number nine, I'll get a nice little uh, distribution here, okay? So I guess what I'm gonna do here is I'm not quite sure if I like this histogram, so I'm gonna change the class width so it'll fit in. So I'll just go like five below and five above. Uh, technically, you could go like a half a value, like half an integer below and half an integer above. There's rules that you use and you could set those up however you see fit. And so as I enter these values in, um, when, I, when I do that, I'm ensuring that um, these values that I'm looking at are going to uh, be displayed properly and so we can we can manipulate the class width how we see fit.